Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video we're going to see how to use buttons, text views, and edit texts in an Android application. So let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to create a empty application activity as before, and I'm going to call this one Demo Text Views. And I'm going to be Java Project, and all that looks pretty good. So we'll start that up, and oops, let me just position it in the right spot here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up some of the, uh, the content of our activity. So I'm going to go in here under the left of my activity. I'm going to get rid of the project view on the left just to give myself a bit more room. I'm going to zoom in and let's get, get rid of everything that we currently have. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to have it say something like, please enter your information. So I'll put it in here and we're going to say, give me a Scroll down here for text. Uh, oops, uh, there we go, text. And we're going to say, enter your info. And we're going to put in a couple boxes. So I'm going to go on the left and I'm going to select text. This text view is a way that you can use to show text, which is what we've got already. And I want to put in some ways to enter information. So we're going to enter maybe some plain text is one thing, and then we're going to have them enter their age, just to have it as a different thing. Um, you can select either a number, a signed number, plus and negative, or decimal, like 3.2. I just want to go with a uh, straight number. So we've got these here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the hints. If I'm on the right-hand side, select, or select the one I want, and then scroll down a little bit into common attributes, it has hint here. This is a cool way of you having this text box automatically tell the user what you want without having to specify a label on it in addition to what you normally would have. So I'll put a name, is that, and then I'm going to get rid of the actual text. I don't want any text there. You'll note that it grays out. This will be the hint that's going to be shown when it executes and shows to my user. And likewise down here I'm going to scroll down and select hint as age. Now, let's do a bit of layout. Remember, if I just ran the program now, it's going to all crush into one spot. Oh, and the last thing I need is a button. Well, let's make a button over here. And I'm going to label this button something like, well, let's call it register. Imagine you're trying to register for some, uh, some activity or other. So text, register. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to set up all the layout constraints. Uh, so I'm going to make this be in the top left. And this one be just below it, and I want this one to actually, I'm going to make it fill the screen, we'll see how to do that in just a second. I'm going to set up all the constraints here so that it lays out just the way I want it to. At the moment this isn't looking that great, but we're going to go through and adjust things to it. So first off, edit your info is in the top left, let's make it a larger font, and so I can go under appearance, and I'm going to select large, oops, just off the screen, but anyway, it says large. And then I'm going to put a little bit of padding around it just so it doesn't quite crush into the corner. Eh, let's do 16. Next, I'm going to also put in a, let's do 8 spacing here and here and here on the tops to give myself a little bit of vertical room. And then on the left and right, it's currently adjusting here the layout width, the content, wrap content. I'm going to say match constraints. I've got left-right constraints, and so it's going to apply those constraints and follow that. And not height, pardon me, uh, wrap content, and then match constraint. Now it doesn't look quite good going right to the edges, so let's add in a border left and right of, I'll do 16 dp. And on the right here, we go like that. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, let me run this and see what happens. Shift F10, which is the same as going run, and then run here. And it's currently trying to build Gradle as running. It launches my emulator, and there's my screen. That looks reasonable, kind of what I wanted. All right, so the last thing I want to do is I want to, when I put these in, I, I don't really do something with it. I'm actually just going to display a little bit of a text down here at the bottom. So I'm going to add in, <clears throat> pardon me, a text view. I'm going to drag that into the screen here, and I'm going to put it below this button. We're going to do the same trick we just did. We're going to make this stretch left and right. So give ourselves a little bit of vertical room here and with match constraints. Okay, so now we've got it laid out. Um, we're going to need to give these names so that we can work with them from inside of my program. 
So I don't need, I'm never going to edit this first one. So there's no sense in changing its name. But the other ones I'm going to want to edit. So this is a edit text. So I'm going to do ET for edit text. And then I'm going to say this is a name, ET name. Now when I do it to change the name, it's going to refactor and change the rest of my code to match. So that's good. I'll say refactor. Likewise, this is going to be ET age, refactor. And down here, this is a text view. So I'm going to go TV. And this is going to be, I'm going to say summary. Let's call this reg, reg summary. We'll put in just some text here. Maybe you'd send this to the server, whatever, doing something amazing. And finally, this button, I like BTN, and let's call this one register. OK, we've set up all of our, our UI here. Now let's go and change our code. So I'm going to go back to main activity. And what I want to do is I want to set up a, an event to happen when I have click the button. So I can do this in two ways. Button btn equals find view by id r dot id dot button. And then I can say button dot, let's do this first, alt import, alt enter to import, fix up the imports. And then here I'm going to say button dot uh, set on click listener, new view dot on click listener. And I can hit alt enter, implement methods. Implement all of them, and there we go. And why is this not happy? Uh, layout does not contain a declaration of that. I think it's because it hasn't rebuilt yet, maybe. Run app. There we go. Yeah, it just hadn't rebuilt. This r.id, this is automatically generated when we compile our uh, activity, and so the compiler hadn't ran yet. So I forced it to do that. And so now that we're doing this, we've got it into here. And I'm going to call a function. I'm going to call this one something like uh, setup, setup, uh, register, uh, setup, uh, register click, on, on register click. In fact, we're, not set, we're just going to call this on register click. Why not? <clears throat> on register click will be my function name here. And this is not a function that ex otherwise exists. So I'm going to hit Alt Enter on it, create the method. And it asked me, do you want to put it inside this anonymous callback function, this anonymous uh, callback object, or inside of my main activity? I'm going to go with the main activity. Goes like that. Now, just a quick thing is I can actually do all this much, much faster. I don't need all of this code. There's a lot of boilerplate. I can change this to be just find view by ID, r.id, and this is the button. And then on this button object that I've got, I can set the on click listener, and I can use it an anonymous, um, a lambda function, pardon me. So it takes in an argument, which is the view. We can see up here, this is the view. I don't actually need it, so I'm just going to say v for the, uh, and then I'm going to say uh, for the lambda function on register click. And that does all of this code. So let's stick with that. It's just nice and tighter. OK, so now we've got this function is going to get called back. Let's prove it gets called first off. So let's put in a, let's do a toast. Toast dot make text. And I need to give it a context. This is going to be fine. This, and then it wants a character sequence. Clicked. And then a duration. So that's going to be toast dot, and let's do it short. And then finally, I need to show it. If I don't call show, very common bug for getting to call show, it would then just create the object and do nothing with it. So call show there. Run it reloads, click the button, and it says clicked at the bottom, so we know that my code is running. So that's a great start. All right, so what do I want to do in here? Let's get rid of that. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to um, validate my inputs. So I'm going to say uh, validate inputs. And then I'm going to um, yeah, maybe just build a summary, build a summary, and display it of our inputs that we've got. We're just going to get some information off of the UI. Uh, so first, let's get the information. So get info, get inputs, inputs. Then we'll validate the inputs, and we'll build a summary to display. So to get these, we've got to do find view by ID. So find view by ID, r.id. And these are both edit text, so et. And that constrains me down to what it thinks is available. Let's do age first. Now, if I wanted to, I could do it all in one. I'm going to split it up just to make it a bit more, a bit clearer. So by splitting it up, we're going to get the object first. This is going to be an edit text. 
edit text, and I call this one uh, ET age, encoding that it's an edit text as opposed to the age, which I'm now going to get. Oops, let's go back down. So string, nope, not age, let's not age. Uh, let's get name first. Name, that's better. And let's call this one name equals, now from this edit text, I need to, oops, string I shall spell, right? I can say et name dot get text. Now this is going to give me back an editable, it said. Let's do that again. It says it's going to be giving back an editable. And an editable I can do a bunch of things on, but really what I want to do is get the content out of it, which I can get by calling to string. So this gives me back that content. And let's do the, name, the same thing for my other one. Edit text, et age equals find view by id r dot id dot oops dot et age this looks good string age I can call this age string because we're going to get this in an int in a minute uh, et age dot uh, not if I do to string here incidentally it tells me it describes the object well I don't want the object I want the contents of it so I got to get get text first and then call to string oops, to string on that. So let's set a breakpoint. I'm going to set a breakpoint here on the left, and then I'm going to debug it just to make sure this thing is working. So run debug app, waiting for the debugger to load. Once it connects, I'm going to put in my name, Brian, age 101, and then I'm going to click register. Code comes in. I'm going to hit F8 <clears throat> to single step, and we can watch it happen here. Gets the object, and then name comes up with Brian. That's right. And then age comes in, we grab the age, mouse over it again, it's a 101. Perfect, it's a string. Okay, so we got all that, proved it's working. Um, let's build up a summary, and then we will uh, do that first. We'll come back and validate in a minute. Validate's a bit longer. So we want to put this out on the screen. So this was a text view. Text view, uh, TV summary equals find view by ID, r dot id dot text view, reg summary. That was the one. And now I can say, I'm going to go alt enter to import. And I can say TV summary equals, oops, dot set text. Now for set text, it's got a number of options. I can set it to a resource ID if I had something in strings.xml. Um, but I'm just going to set it to a plain old string. And I can build that string right here. I can say hello, and I'll put in the name, uh, name. You are age. Uh, we don't have an age int. Yeah, I'll just say age, and let's put a new age up here. I'll have to do that conversion in just a second. All right. So that looks reasonable. It's suggesting I should do some uh, user resource ID. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this video for what how to do that. All right, so we're putting it together, getting it all put together, and let's we just put in a value here. I'm going to run this and prove that it works. Register, and we can see now that the output comes up. Hello, Brian. You are one two three four. I've now st I've got to still do this conversion about c converting this uh, string across. Because it's a string, I now have to do a uh, uh, convert it as it's just plain Java. So this is going to be integer dot parse int. And for this, I need to pass it in a string that I want to parse. This is going to be age stir, and it's going to return me back int age. Now, there's one thing you might be know about this. This can fail. Let's see what happens when it fails. I have no text here. When I click register, my program crashed. We go back to log cat and we'll see what happened. So I'm going to run this again. Log cat is your friend when everything breaks. Run up log cat. So now it's running. It's on this correctly. I'm going to click register. And it crashes and gives me a nice error message here. <clears throat> and it says I have a number format exception on the empty string. It can't convert the empty string to a number. So I got to do a try catch. Try. Mm -hmm. Try the following. <coughs> Catch, we're going to find a number format oops, number format exception. If I catch a number format exception, I'm going to put up some sort of error message here. So let's put up a, cat, a toast, toast, and this is going to be make 
text on this. <clears throat> uh, age must not be empty. I get a hill how long. I want to do this for toast dot oops, toast dot short. And then I got to call show, just like before. OK, so that's looking good so far. My problem is I've got age is declared inside the ver inside this try catch. I need to int age outside. And then we'll do this. And the last thing I want to do is return, because I don't want to do anything else there. So let me try this again. We'll add a little bit more validation in just a moment. So I do this, put some a little toast. Age must not be empty. So that's good. And if I type in my na oops, name, and then age, it works correctly. Let's do a bit more validation. Let's make sure that our name is greater than two characters long, and that the age is, say, between 0 and 110. So for validation, I can say if name dot psi, a length, is less than 2, well, then we'll do basically what we did before. I'm just going to copy and paste from here. And we'll put in here that this uh, name must be longer. And we'll do the same similar check on age. If age is less than 0, well, let's see, you got to be 10. Or age is greater than 110, then invalid age. And that should do us. All right. Let's run this and see what happens. So I run it right now. Age must not be empty. OK, so we'll put in an age like 1. Now it tells us name must be longer. BR, register, invalid age. Again, invalid age. And we'll go to age 11. Now it worked. And we're doing the validation. So that's all pretty cool. The last thing we want to show is let's switch this into something in strings.xml. Uh, just anytime you're using uh, things that are visible to the user, I'm going to Alt Enter and it says Extract String Resource. And I give it a name and we'll say uh, toast underscore uh, invalid or age to short. And so now it's popped that out and it should have put it into my strings.xml under projects, resources, and then values, strings.xml, and there it is. Age must be empty. And I can do that for the other ones. If I build, this will probably um, run the app. It'll force the compiler to run. It'll rebuild all my resources, and now this will be there. I can do the same thing for my other ones, and then, then I can easily internationalize that. Have a look at some other videos uh, that'll show you a bit more about how to use strings.xml. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.